Hi everyone, I'm Shelly from There's No Place Like Home at redheadmommate.wordpress.com. Chances are, if you are a homeschooling parent, you have heard of read-alouds. And read-alouds are certainly worth all of the acclaim that they get in the homeschooling community. But I think that a lot of homeschooling parents don't really realize how valuable they actually can be. Because not only are read-alouds a great way for you to bond with your children, for you to help promote literacy, maybe to help the struggling reader, or to even help them understand certain topics that you're learning about, read-alouds can literally be the spine of your homeschool. And I'm going to give you some ideas today on how to do just that. Homeschooling using read-alouds as your spine can really look different for every single homeschooling family. And I think that that's something that most of us know. No matter whether it's read-alouds or the homeschooling method that you use or how you approach textbooks or how you approach notebooking, since there are so many different ways that families can look, can interact, can be interested in things, Homeschooling is going to look like that no matter what method you're using. And that is something that is true, again, for read alouds as a spine for your homeschool. So that is really why I decided to do this video today because using read alouds as our spine has really brought some simplicity to our homeschool. Um, simple but effective is something that I say a lot and it's because it is so true. It really Let's go of some of the anxiety that we used to feel of always feeling like we were rushing or that we were behind or that we were bored doing worksheets. You know, read alouds have honestly transformed our homeschool. And so I just wanted to bring some ways to you that you could possibly start incorporating read alouds as your spine. Now I mean as your spine, as the entire focus of your homeschool. Because let's think about this, a lot of times when we are talking homeschool curriculum, people will very often think about textbooks. You know, they'll think of getting a boxed curriculum or they'll think of a specific textbook publisher and all the subjects that they would get for that. And yeah, some, some homeschooling families do use textbooks, but that is not the only way that you can homeschool. And today I'm gonna to share with you the very first way that you can incorporate read alouds as your spine is through literature-based curriculum. Now, I've been using read alouds in our homeschool really as our focal point for years now, but it was really just a year or two ago that I was ever able to actually use a literature based curriculum. I knew that they existed, but I just had no idea what they were like, and I had the opportunity to use a few of them, and they're just amazing. So, what a literature based curriculum is, is well, just what it sounds like it is using a book or a series of books as the main point of incorporating subject areas into a homeschool routine. Now there are different literature-based homeschooling companies and they all have their, their different approaches to doing literature-based learning. You know, some of them might use worksheets and mapping with theirs. Others might have hands-on activities, others may not. Some, some curriculums, depending on the age level, may use picture books while others may use chapter books. But the one thing that they all have in common is, yes, that a book, a real book, not a textbook, is what everything is focused on, where all of that learning comes from. So I actually do have um, some examples of literature-based curriculum here. So the first one, I'm just gonna show you really quickly because I've already done reviews or at least unboxings of most of these. So I just wanted to give you a quick example. But first we have Around the World with Picture Books, which is for younger children. And that is a curriculum that uses books like this. Remember I said some of them use picture books? That's what this is. And obviously it's called Around the World with Picture Books. Um, now this, this is Beautiful Feet Books. I don't remember if I said it or not, but now I did. And 
they do incorporate hands-on activities. There is some art incorporated into this. Of course, there's geography since it's around the world with picture books. Um, there is some notebooking involved in this. So yes, this is a curriculum that is all encompassing. And when we use it, we really only have to add math, and depending on how much writing my girls are doing, sometimes we might add in some phonics or reading. So that is one example of a literature-based curriculum. Now, Beautiful Feet Books does go all the way up through high school. And I do have an example of an intermediate Beautiful Feet Books here. This is geared towards students in fifth through eighth grade. And this is Ancient History through Beautiful Feet Books. And they use books like this. I'm just going to show you. And these are the two that we are actually using right now. There are more. And I will link the, the unboxing in the description box below because I don't want to bore you with like all the books for all of the curriculums that I'm going to show you right now. But those are just some examples. And as with Around the World with Picture Books, the Ancient History unit does also incorporate some hands-on activities. Now, I know that there are some literature-based curriculums like Sunlight that at least the last that I heard, don't really incorporate hands-on activities. You need to kind of pull some in yourself if that's something that you want to do with your kids. But yes, with these two Beautiful Feet books, um, unit plans, yeah, there's hands-on activities. As a matter of fact, just today, the book, this book right here is about ancient Mesopotamia. So today, my kids made cookie dough, the, the cookie dough from chocolate chips, but without the chocolate chips, and they actually made their own cuneiform tablets with it, and then we baked them, well, of course, they wrote in them before we baked them, and then afterwards, they got to eat them, and I got some too, and it was very good, but yeah, there's hands-on activities with this too, last week, they just made um, Sumerian jewelry, so this is one curriculum that has all different approaches to it, but yes, everything is derived from that one book that you are reading. That starting point is the catalyst for everything that they will be learning. So another, another option that you would have is the, the Case of Adventure unit studies. Now, if I'm going to show you this one first of all. Case of Adventure is a unit study, but it is a literature-based unit study. So, for example, here is one book. A Clash of Swords. And all of the learning is based on that one book, A Clash of Swords. Now, this one not only has hands-on activities, but it also comes with a lot of printables. Um, you can even get a separate book that is just for lap booking, if lap booking is something that you choose to do. So if you have a child who really likes to do that sort of thing, the Case of Adventure series is really good because, again, you've got that whole literature-based thing. It's very relaxed. You read a chapter. You discuss some things. And then you can have them do however many activities you want to afterwards. But, yes, you are covering so many different subject areas with just this one chapter of a book every day. You know, you, you just really can't beat it. And here is an example of another case of adventure one that does not have a separate book. The, the book that is being used with this one is actually incorporated right into the activity book. So for example, this one says day five, and then you will do the activities for day five. And it's something that I always will point out is that you don't have to do all of the activities, not in any curriculum. No matter what kind of curriculum it is, you do not have to do every single activity that is listed. Choose the ones that you want to do and make sure that you make it something that you and your kids can handle. Don't ever overdo it in your homeschool. You want your kids to enjoy learning. You don't want them to dread it. And if you're trying to jam too many things into one day, that is exactly what's going to happen. Just help your kids to see that learning really is something that happens all the time, no matter what they're doing. And it isn't confined to one period of a day or just doing certain activities. And so one other literature-based curriculum that I have never used, so I don't have an example to show you, but that I do know of is Bookshark. And that one is actually affiliated with Sunlight. Sunlight is the Christian version and Bookshark is the secular version. But yes, it is completely literature based and they really, oh, I, one thing that I want to say about all of these curriculums is that they have really good quality literature being used. So yes, that is one way to make read alouds the spine of your homeschool is if you would actually use a literature based curriculum.
So the second way that you can make read-alouds the spine of your homeschool is by having your kids do read-alouds with notebooking. So I think that a lot of us, when we think about learning, we kind of think of, okay, we have science and social studies and history and geography and language arts and math. And we just think of it, of it as this segmented thing. And that's not what learning has to look like. And so books are a fantastic way to pull in all subject areas without making everything disjoint, disjointed. So for example, my kids and I right now are reading Throne of Fire in addition to what we're doing here. Yeah, read alouds are big, so we're doing two right now. So anyway, we're also reading Throne of Fire right now. And in that Throne of Fire read aloud, my kids are covering ancient history, geography, social studies, science, and Egyptian mythology. I might have even missed some things, but five different subjects in that one read aloud that I'm doing with my kids every day. So if you would want to incorporate language arts into that, right there is your notebooking. And I do have a, um, a video about how to do read alouds with notebooking. So I will just briefly tell you how you can do it here, is you could just read a chapter to your kids every day, ask them either afterwards or maybe every few pages during the chapter to narrate back to you what it was about. So narrate just basically means you want your child to tell you everything that they remember from what you read. Now, if you have more than one child like I do, I just have them take turns. I stop every couple pages and I will just kind of go around in a circle with my kids. Or sometimes we'll pick out little popsicle sticks with a number on so that they don't know that they're next, you know. Um, so that element of surprise really keeps them on their toes and makes sure that they're listening well. But anyway, you want them to narrate back. Then one really helpful thing after you are done reading that chapter for the day is to have some sort of whiteboard or a chalkboard or maybe like a huge piece of paper where you will ask your kids what sorts of words or phrases they want you to write down up there where they can all see it to help them jog their memory because they're going to write a notebooking page about what was read about that day. So that, that is something that my kids really found helpful is when I did do that word bank for them. After that, you just let them pick out a notebooking page. Um, you can get those at notebookingpages.com. I will link that down below in the description box. And you, well, one thing that I do, I should say, is I give my kids the choice of how they want to approach those notebooking pages. Um, they can write a written narration of what the chapter was about. They can write a summary of their favorite part. They can do a character sketch. They can write a comic strip, as long as it is something related to something that happened in the story. Younger kids can do an illustration um, accompanied by a caption if they can do any sort of writing at all. So I don't, when it comes to notebooking, I don't tell my kids specifically what I want them to write. I just want them to write about something that they remember in a way that they think will be fun. So this is a few years old, but this is when we were reading Peter Pan. And now this was one of my younger kids, but as you can see here, this was just an illustration of the chapter that we read that day. And it's nice to see these, these notebooks for the read alouds because you see how your child's writing progresses as time goes on. So here is just a little notebooking page. And I'll just read this one too. He said, my favorite chapter is chapter one. Fairy dust shadow. Tinkerbell got stuck in a jar and Pan got her out. So, you know, and that's how it just goes throughout this. Just different ways for him to write about. I think this is my son. For him to write about what he remembered. Here's just another illustration where she's sad and crying. I don't remember if that was Wendy or not. This was a few years ago. I'm trying to see if I have any other. We can see towards the end he did start writing more. But, yeah. Anyway. Read alouds are a great way to incorporate all of those subject areas and notebooking is just the perfect way to add in that language arts. Get that language arts in there, that writing, that spelling, um, and that way you just add in math and really your homeschool day can be done, really. And now the third way that you can use read alouds as your spine is the way that takes the least amount of preparation. And this is what I call read alouds followed by rabbit trails. And so what this really means is that you just read to your kids. 
you read to your kids, and then afterwards you might have a discussion or they might have some questions about you know what you read or sometimes you might even choose to narrate. But after that, you really just allow your kids to explore things that they want to explore that they gained the idea from the book. So for example, my kids, when we were reading the Little House series, the, after we were done reading, they were always, they would just run out back and they would start pretending to churn butter or they would start gathering sticks and they would try to make their own cabin. Um, they decided to make snow candy when it snowed outside. Um, they decided to make the, the little sugar cookies that were talked about in one of the stories and they actually included the recipe in the story. And these are all ideas of ways that your kids might actually get their ideas from the books themselves and just give them the time and the space and the resources to do that. So some ways, some other ways that they might do that are they might be interested in watching more documentaries or other movies or shows that are about the topic that you've been reading about. They might ask you to take them to the library so they can get more books out either on that specific subject or on a, like a little subtopic that was inside of that story. They might ask you to take them somewhere. If you have, for example, a historical site around you that is somehow connected to something that you've been reading about, they might ask you to do that. But just like my kids did, they might also just want to act it out. Let them act out their, their favorite parts in those stories. When they are acting out those their, their favorite parts, that is a clear sign that they were listening. If they were listening well enough that they can pretty much do their own skit outside about what you read. So I just really wanted to bring all of this out to you today because read alouds have been such a godsend to our family and I've got a lot of kids. Out of my 11 kids, I still have eight of them homeschooling and out of the eight that homeschool, I still read aloud to seven of them. The only one that I have not read aloud to so far this year is my 17 year old. Everybody else from my 14 year old on down gets read to and we all enjoy it and we all love to incorporate our learning into what that book was about. So anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can try to leave one down below if YouTube has not disabled my comments. If they have, you can always head on over to Instagram and you can contact me there. I'm on there pretty much, so I will leave that link below if you don't follow me there already. And if you like my work, I encourage you to check out my Patreon page and see what rewards I have for my patrons there. And I hope you have a great day.